Thank you. So at our last meeting, I was charged with reaching out to the two other candidates for superintendent, which I did. Um, I spoke with Dr. Meyer and I spoke with Dr. Mosley. Um, I met with Dr. Meyer Saturday morning very briefly um, so he could explain his, you know, how he reacted to the phone call and why. And uh, I reached out to Dr. Mosley, who was pleased to hear from me and, and explained that, you know, what had happened and, and that we were still interested. Um, I can read Dr. Dr. Um, Meyer sent me a, a text, which I, because I, I, basically, uh, because um, we had made the choice uh, previously for Dr. Diaz, um, obviously the other two candidates said, well, I'm, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not on the list for that job any longer. And I think he's sensitive, and, and, and we will be too, to his school committee because he doesn't want to say I'm here, I'm not here, I might be here, I might not be here. So um, if I can find this, <laughs> um, I'll read it to you. But of course, I may not be able to find it. Um, okay. This is from Dr. Meyer. Dear, dear Clinton School Committee, the opportunity to be the superintendent of Clinton Public Schools is the one outside position for which I have applied since working in Athol. I am still interested in the position. However, given that I was previously informed that I was not chosen for the position, I do not believe that it is fair to the communities of Athol and Royalston to subject them to the uncertainty and discomfort of continuing to move forward with a site visit unless it is made clear that I am the preferred candidate of the committee. I believe that it is important for a new superintendent to ultimately have the unanimous support of the school committee. At this point, if I am shown strong support by the school committee, we can move forward with a final uh, vetting process. Without a strong vote of support, I'm afraid I will be forced to withdraw my name from consideration. I hope that the committee is able to come to a consensus on a decision which they believe is truly in the best interest of the students of Clinton, whatever that decision may be, respectfully, uh, Stephen Meyer, um, which I understand. Uh, Dr. Mosley has a visit from Hudson. I, mis I was mistaken. I thought it was last, <laughs> last Friday, but it is this Friday. So he's a finalist in the Hudson School District, and they are visiting. Um, he is more than happy to uh, have us visit. And I said um, what I would do, it, and he forwarded to me uh, a list of references that I will forward to, this, to the committee to, to uh, begin any kind of initial um, follow-up to his, to his visit here. And um, and then I guess pending that result of whether uh, Hudson chooses him, that would make it a moot point if he's chosen as their next school committee member, uh, uh, superintendent. Um, and I have no idea what their decision-making process is, or if they uh, will make the decision after the visit. Um, I don't know what that. I don't know. I don't know that he knows. So, um, but meanwhile, I do have that list, and um, I think we. We said we would go forward. I did talk to both uh, both candidates, and I said that um, that's the interest of the committee as of the last meeting. And so I'm I'm proposing that that's what we do. Mr. Chairman, if I may, you may. Um, just want to give a quick um, endorsement. I know everyone knows where I stand on Dr. Meyer, but. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you wanted to create an ideal candidate to lead Clinton, um, I, I, I think you couldn't come up with a candidate that would, that would be a better fit than Dr. Meyer. Um, he's a hybrid. What I mean by that is he's the best of both worlds in regard to this never-ending debate of whether an insider or an outsider is best for the needs of Clinton. Um, he got a start here and then left to pursue his career. He's, uh, he has an outsider's experience and perspective combined with a unique insight into the town someone who understands the culture of Clinton, but at the same time is not beholden to it. He's had success as a principal, assistant superintendent, and now superintendent, he wants to bring that experience back to Clinton. This isn't the first time he's applied for this position. With a lot less experience, he applied for superintendent during the last search, which to me shows that his desire for this position and the challenge it entails is a long-term goal of his. While I have the utmost respect for Dr. Mosley and his credentials, I have to go back to my earlier concern regarding the fundamental differences between Clinton and the town of Sharon, where he currently works as assistant superintendent. 
In a list of cities and towns in Massachusetts ranked by income, Sharon ranks 33rd, Clinton ranks 250th. Both its median household income and per capita income double ours. Per student expenditure rank in the state. Um, Clinton is at 269. Sharon is at 119, meaning that's 150 schools in between the two of us. Even by Dr. Mo uh, Mosley's own admission, funding and resources have never been a problem for him there. Um, that's just not the case in this district. Uh, we make it work, but things are tighter here. Um, I, when was the last time anyone heard uh, Mr. Angano say that we are okay with funding and resources? It's always a battle here. And uh, I'm just not convinced that that one that Dr. Mosley is familiar with. In addition, Dr. Mosley is currently applying for superintendent in many other districts. Um, Dr. Meyer is secure in his position with Athol, with Athol and is only applying for the Clinton position because of the high regard he has for the district and his desire to take his experience and bring this district to the next level. In short, Dr. Mosley is looking for a job. Dr. Meyer is only looking for this job. We need a superintendent who has experience working in both similar economic surroundings and similar budget constraints. Dr. Meyer has gained that experience while working as superintendent in Athol, which is much more similar to Clinton using all previous metrics. To wrap up, I think Dr. Meyer is, a, is really a once in a lifetime candidate for this town. I would be extremely disappointed if we missed out on this opportunity. Just to summarize, one is currently a superintendent, the other is not. One has experience working in this district, the other does not. One previously applied for this position, which to me proves his long-term interest, the other did not. One is only applying for this job, the other is applying for many. One currently works in a district that is comparable to Clinton, the other does not. We can move forward doing site visits and checking references on both candidates. I do not have a problem, problem with that, but it's my strong belief that it's critical that we vote on a preferred candidate. Um, site visits and reference checks will be important. If something is uncovered and uh, warrants reconsideration for our preference, we can do that. Uh, but I think we've had enough information and time to at least know which candidate we prefer. Uh, therefore, I make a motion that we vote to declare Dr. Meyer the preferred candidate and providing that the vetting process is successful, we enter into, into negotiations with him for the job of Superintendent of Clinton. Um, I appreciate you having changed your, your position. Um, what is the motion? On the table? I, I, I understand that. <laughs> um, does that motion receive a second? Well, I'll second it, but there's, there's, I have some questions about the motion itself, and okay. because there are a lot, there are a lot of things that were added into the idea of can we talk about preference? Um, now we've gone down this road once already, where we had a step that we had agreed to, and and then by narrowing the focus, put us in the position that brings us here today. Um, I, I would add to your list, in addition to the qualifications that you listed, it's also about experience and not. And, um, you know, while I've had an opportunity to see both candidates in, in, um, in multiple phases of this process, uh, you know, for me, there, there is a level of experience and an understanding of the financial um, mechanisms of public schooling that uh, that Dr. Meyer has lived and experienced and Dr. Mosley just simply has not, which is not to say that you can't learn on the job, it's, and which is not to say that he wouldn't be supportive with Mrs. Sheridan, but, um, but it's not an insignificant learning curve from my perspective. Um, so I just I think that there's a lot to that motion because you're talking about not only deciding that we're preferring this candidate, but that we're, and perhaps I heard you wrong, so maybe you can read it back, Mary, but that we would enter into negotiations provided the vetting is, that we've, I don't know how it was worded. Right, well, I mean, I'm trying to capture, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that the what we wanted to do the last time was we had a we had a three to two vote and I think the regret that all of us had is that even though we had a three to two vote we had a preferred candidate that we didn't continue with the vetting process on both candidates that we didn't do site visits with 
both Dr. Meyer and uh, Dr. Diaz, even though there was a three to two vote, if we had done those, the, the extra vetting and the site visits, then when things happened and now Dr. Diaz was no longer available, we would be in a better position than we, we are in right now. So all I'm advocating is, is that same strategy that we wanted to do in hindsight, that, but that we never did. Whereas we, we, we pick a preferred candidate and then we move forward with the vetting process on both. And if, if something, like in the case of Dr. Diaz, if, if something comes up and, and, and somebody uh, uh, takes themselves out of the running or if something comes up that bothers somebody that they need to bring to the attention, um, uh, it's something that we, we reconsider. And we can, um, you know, it can get brought to the, to the committee and we can reconsider it and it may change people's minds. It may change my mind. Did, did I answer your question, Joel, or you, is it? Yeah, yeah. So, so the motion is essentially to to for us to to voice a preference, uh, and and that said, move forward with vetting both candidates. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I stand by the second. Though. So, under discussion. Um, <clears throat> I would say that um, our last two superintendents, our present superintendent and the last superintendent had no training in budget formation and, and went through a mentoring program and I think is, I mean there is definitely, a, I don't care who gets that job, there's a growing, there's a growth factor involved. Um, I, at our last meeting, um, that motion wasn't made and um, and the information I got was that we were interested in going with both looking at both candidates on an equal playing field that they're both viable candidates for the position um, Dr. Meyer yes he is a superintendent Dr. Mosley has a, has a wealth of a background I, I, I think they're both eminently capable um, but uh, I did reach out and say that the committee is and I, I wrote to everybody, I said, listen, I'm not going to call these people and say, you know, we, we, we chose somebody else, but now we're coming back um, to you. And then say, no, oh, you know, we changed our mind again. I think that both candidates deserve uh, um, that vetting process. And I think that um, the opportunity to, to, to try and move this uh, for a preferred candidate was at our last meeting, and it's not at this meeting. Because at this meeting, I've already, I, you know, personally, it was uncomfortable. I spent the whole weekend uh, speaking with both candidates. They're both, I mean, I, I, I recognize the difficulty for both of them. There, it's, uh, it's, it, and I spent a lot of time um, uh, speaking with both of them. And, and I don't think, in fairness, because that was that was the decision of the committee last time. There wasn't a, a vote taken, and so and so now uh, I've said we we will. Uh, given their their availability, uh, move forward. Um, I would say uh, to Dr. Meyer's um, letter. Um, in fairness, if we reach out to Dr. Mosley and, and and have a site visit and come back and discuss that, and then uh, then I think in fairness you can take a vote and and say, um, you know, we've seen we've seen what we've seen and heard what we've heard from that district, and and then. To your interest, um, perhaps either proceed with Dr. Mosley or Dr. Meyer without putting Dr. Meyer in that position of of, of uh, because I don't I personally don't feel after <laughs> after talking to both candidates that I could fairly say, oh, I was just kidding. Um, um, I I got the message loud and clear that we were looking at both candidates, and that's what I delivered with no preference. I with either of them. I, I, I spent a long time talking to Dr. Mosley. I, I had a sit down with Dr. Meyer. He explained what he wrote in a letter. Um, so I, I would understand how he reacted when I called him. And in fairness, I, I absolutely understand you know, his position and his relationship with his school committee, um, and not wanting to put them in any kind of you know, uncomfortable position. So um, if there's a motion on the floor, I understand that, and mm -hmm. we'll take a vote. But the, but the other side of that is um, I will forward 
the references that I got from, from Dr. Uh, Mosley to everybody. Um, I would say uh, to identify yourself as, as a Clinton School Committee member and, and, and make phone calls and ask the questions you want to ask, you know, to your satisfaction. And, um, and then, as I said, I, we won't know. And I told them that it couldn't be this week between the snowstorm and my schedule. And I didn't know anybody's schedule um, for him to set up a, a site visit this week seemed, excuse me, too, too quick for uh, me to say yes. And like I say, Hudson's going Friday, so sometime next week. Uh, he'll be able to do that, uh, assuming that he hasn't had some other word. Um, so, Robert, if I may, I mean, may. I did everything at that last meeting except make a motion. The only reason I didn't was because I wanted to have a dialogue about it first, and there was heavy feedback from everyone that I not make the motion at this time. And my concern, the reason I'm making it now, which is validated in that correspondence from Dr. Meyer, is that we might lose him because he doesn't feel comfortable. He wasn't our first choice. And even though he had two votes, we're still stalling and he can't, we, he can't get a third vote right now. This is our second meeting now. So, and no offense to Mr. Ngano, we also introduced the possibility of having Mr. Ngano come back for another year. So we haven't really been sending him signals of any sort of support or confidence. So I do kind of under, as, as much as I wish um, he didn't feel that way. I do kind of understand that he feels that way. And my fear is that if we do nothing now, that he follows through and he removes himself from the race, then our last superintendent candidate is one that is applying at multiple other schools that we may not even get, even if we wanted. Who, who I, I think that Dr. Meyer is the, is, the, is the more qualified candidate, but Dr. Mosley is still looking at other schools. I mean, there's a potential, if we don't act tonight, and then we only move forward with Dr. Mosley, there's a potential we could come out with zero superintendents out of the search. And that does not look good for any of us. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may. You may. Um, I guess my comment would be the following. We all sat here, according to the minutes that we all approved today, uh, that all candidates would be qualified for this position, all of them. That's what we all said, that every one of them would be qualified or could be the superintendent. As to Dr. Meyer's experience as superintendent, he has not even a year as superintendent. Yes, he was an assistant superintendent, but he doesn't have a full year of that. It's not much more than Dr. Mosley has. Uh, in addition to that, he has served less, the superintendent position for less than a year, and he's already leaving that district. That concerns me a little bit. Um, I think it would be unfair to pick a candidate uh, a preference at this point in time. I think the process that we set forth was to vet the candidates equally. I think by not doing so, we're sending an unfair advantage to one of the candidates. Um, so, I mean, I just think it's, we move forward the way we agreed to do it. Again, they're all qualified to do it. Uh, there isn't an overwhelming experience on, on either one of them. And I'm just trying to be fair throughout the whole process. I mean, so that's just my two cents. Yeah. Mr. Chair, if I may, why was it okay to move forward with a three to two vote when it was the other three members' first choice on their candidate? I didn't hear anybody speaking up with these objections. We moved forward when you guys got your first candidate. And now when we're trying to do this a second time, now everyone is objecting to this, this method. It just seems a little, it, 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 it doesn't seem like it's applying the same rules no, to both I, candidates. I, I, I disagree. I think that um, I don't at, know our how, last, I, at, at our last meeting, I don't know how you can disagree. Though. Nobody made a motion. I can't, I can't. I'm talking about the first with with Dr. Diaz. That first vote, we voted we voted three to two, and I don't I didn't hear any of these objections that I'm hearing now about being fair to both candidates and vetting both candidates. We got three to two vote, and we just moved, and. That's, like, that's, I mean, like, really, I mean, the reality is, uh, it, it, the fact of the matter is that in, in matters of, of, of voting, it's a 3-2 majority, and that's how school committees make up their minds. Sometimes it's unanimous, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's popular, sometimes it's not. And I, all I'm saying is that's the way we voted, that's, and obviously we, 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 can't re, we can't redress That's what, not my point, though. Well, my, my point is that the objections that... I'm hearing from Mr. Mendoza were not brought up at when we had the vote on Dr. Diaz. 
and I'm just I'm wondering why it seems that there's we're applying two sets of rules to, to, to the candidates. And I think respectfully, you know, the, the first time we aired, we made a mistake that we it, it shouldn't have been a declaration of preference anyway. But the I think that I think that you know we've been along in this process for a long time, and you know I I think it's fair to say you know some fatigue sets in, and you have candidates in front of you, and you you want to move forward and. You know, in retrospect, that was not the way to have done it, and and yet, and I understand the sense of urgency, and I understand the 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 desire that Dr. Meyer has to um, you know, to know with some level of assurity that you know if if he's going to continue to put himself and his family and his school district through this process, that there's some hope of of him coming into this district. But I, you're asking us to do the same thing that um, we, I'm not because I, the what happened last the mistake that the way I understand it last time was that <coughs> we voted three to two preference, but then we didn't vet both candidates. We didn't do site visits on both candidates. We didn't um, check references on both candidates. So the mistake was that we just voted three to two, and then we just moved ahead with Dr. Diaz. What I am proposing is what unless I understood incorrectly, we thought we should have done in the first place was have a vote, have a preferred candidate, but still continue the vetting process on both finalists in case, as a contingency, in case something happens to one of them, that we have information. I mean, if we did that, right, if we had a three to two vote and we continued with site visits and checking references on both the candidates, Dr. Meyer and Dr. Diaz, it would have been a much more smoother transition from then into, into the next um, into the next vote. I, I strongly believe that. So all I'm proposing is that, uh, is that we do what we originally thought we should have done in the first place. So is that fair, though, to Dr. Mosley? And, and again, I say this it's, it's already, it's it, it, but, but I've, I said this already declaring my preference for Dr. Meyer, that you, you, we're, we're asking we're asking to, and I understand the distinction, but we're, you're at, we're asking to go back to the mistake that we made in the first place by by naming a candidate, and then and then by by it, you know if we were to name Dr. Meyer, then Dr. Mosley is our third choice that we're going to at that point. And honestly, I don't think it matters to uh, in in the grand scheme of things, the right when the right person is hired there are still a number of steps in place with regard to the negotiations and the goal setting that that person goes through with the school committee and the accountability measures with the school committee that you know ultimately i think that person sitting in that chair the right person will be the right choice and so I, whether it's you know if you really want to be in this school district whether you're the second choice or the third choice if you're the last choice, that's what ultimately matters. But I mean, who would want to come to a district and I mean, possibly within Dr. Meyer's case, he, he lives close by. But I mean, if, if you some superintendents would have to move their family, like who would make a huge decision on that? If you were the third choice in a district and you had and, and you didn't have a lot of support. I mean, that's I, that's what's motivating. I mean, the, number, that's what's number. motivating him to say, will you please let me know if you are serious or not? Because he, he's, been through this, uh, he's been through this enough, and he just wants to know where he stands. And I've said it, uh, I, I wish that this wasn't the case that we were in right now. If it was up to me, I would want to move forward with vetting both as equal. But as I said again, my fear is that he follows through on this. He pulls out of the race. And then our last candidate is somebody who is looking at multiple schools who we still may not get anyway. And we end up with, with zero superintendent candidates. So I'm not gonna repeat it much more because I've already said it twice. I think everyone knows exactly where I stand. Um, I'm, I'm sure other people wanna talk, so I'll sit back. Do you have something to say? I do. So what I was trying to get at at the last meeting and I thought I was fairly clear is that you know 
we didn't necessarily handle the process in an ideal way, looking back on it as far as how the votes took place. What I'm trying to do is to have us not repeat history and go down the road of the same era. And what I'm trying to do is we have two candidates in front of us that are two viable candidates and to give them a fair opportunity, a fair shot as far as moving forward. And I feel as though with what you're asking of a motion tonight, without doing the site visits, is not being fair to both candidates. And that's why I don't want to repeat the history because if we could have gone back and we can't, I would have said with what we know now to go and do site visits on all three candidates then before we had a vote. So you wouldn't have, so you wouldn't have voted three to two for, for Diaz going back? What I'm saying is I have no regrets of voting for Dr. Diaz when I did with the information in front of me. Okay, but it's going to be one or the other, Mike. You're saying that would you have voted for Dr. Diaz or would you have said we shouldn't have a vote until we vet until we vet all three candidates or until we vet what I'm saying Ed is with the information in front of us today with how everything has unfolded I recognize that I would not want to have that be repeated the same way so I'm trying not to make errors the same way when we've already had an opportunity to learn from our practices and what I'm saying is I feel like Dr. Mosley and Dr. Meyer would be in a much better, better situation with us today if we went down that road. And if we don't go down that road today, then we're going to be unfair to one of these candidates again. And there's still an unknown as far as finalizing candidates, and we have seen that. Well, I'm glad everyone found their sense of fairness since the, since the vote on Dr. Diaz. Well, <laughs> I, I, I've been on the committee a long time, and I have to say, um, there was a time, probably incorrectly, where we did our initial voting in executive session, and they weren't unanimous decisions. I mean, it, that's it's three, two, four, one, whatever it is. I mean, I I can't help that. I mean, clearly, uh, we we got egg on our face um, with Dr. Diaz. It was an unfortunate situation, um, but. I think going forward, we need. I think we need to fairly look at both. I, I think that since Dr. Meyer has said he's interested in our district, he understands where we are. We're not going to put him. Um, I think he just has to uh, put off. Um, I, I, in fairness, I think if we if we pursue Dr. Mosley's background and, and and do a site visit, and 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 talk about that, and then make 